And welcome to the Jeff Cable Show. We have a special guest host tonight. Milan Brown joins us, assistant coach. And how do you, what are your takeaways as you think about that Duke game? What are some of the things you guys as coaches took away from that? Well, the, first and foremost, we were excited to see the way we competed. Uh, not that we expected that we wouldn't get a 40 minutes of great effort. But when you're in that building, it can be a little daunting every so often. And it was great to see our guys respond. We got down early and we were able to uh, fight our way back uphill. And um, so that's the first thing. And we talked a little bit about it. Coach Capel won't mention it, um, and he shouldn't have to do it before the game. I know I did. Just the guys wanted to make sure that when, when Coach went home that um, he was able to put the product on the court that would be a direct reflection of what he's doing with our program, and that's fight for 40 minutes and play intelligent basketball. And we know we're in the um, early stages of, of building that, but – the guys also knew the moment for Coach, and they wanted to make sure they uh, played up to, to their capabilities. Coach mentioned after the game, he said, you want to get to the point where you're not satisfied or not pointing out things in a loss. Right. But how do you walk that line of, you know, you're still improving, you want the guys to have positive feelings, yet you don't want them to be complacent about losing? Well, I think the way you put it is exactly what we said. Uh, we, the first thing Coach said when we walked in the locker room was he was proud of everyone's effort. But this is not the result that we are trying to, uh, to achieve. And we have to understand that there is a balance of, yes, we appreciate the effort, but we have to understand that the effort that we put out obviously wasn't good enough. And there's some things that we need to continue to work on. And the goal is to bring the program to a level that it's actually never been before. And so with that comes a long work that's probably been never done before. I want to get your perspective on a couple of guys. Obviously, Jeff has been here for the show, but with you in today, Milan Brown, guest hosting today, what has made, from your standpoint, Justin Champagny, that transition, not seamless, but why has he been able to have success as a freshman? Well, I think first and foremost, he has, he has a knack around the paint. He's not afraid of contact, but he's also able to finish through contact. He's very, very good finishing plays. 15 feet and in. He comes to play for us, and he probably, we joke with him sometimes, he probably should buy Coach Capel a Christmas gift because <laughs> I don't know if he ever shot a three before he arrived at Pittsburgh. And really? We're allowing him to, to, to be a player. And so he's gotten to the gym. He's put the work in. I think he's starting to understand that the work he's put in has been good, but it's, I need to put in a little bit more. And so, um, but it's, it's hard to put, it's hard to put that round thing in the basket, especially when they're trying to stop you. And when you have touch like he does, he can contort his body and make some plays that seem very hard to some people. But for him, it just comes naturally, and so we're blessed to have him. You could tell he's had some good coaching because there are fundamental things that he does, boxing out and, and just little things that he does really well for a young player. Absolutely. And, um, you know, the high school that he's, uh, program that he came from, obviously, but, but where he's from. You expect guys from New York to bring a certain amount of toughness, um, to understand what it's like to have somewhat of a playground mentality that you're not going to stop me and I'm going to get to the point where I can make the plays I know I'm capable of making. And so, um, and the guys embracing, I think he's also done a good job of playing off, and all of our guys have tried to find their own little ways, but he's found a way to play off all the attention that Xavier and Dre receive. So some of the time he's been able to make his guy pay because the staff on the other sideline without fail every night is saying, we have to stop one and we have to stop two. And 11 is making them pay. Malone, we're going to talk about some of the guards you work with a little later in the show, but I want to ask you one more. Kareem Koulibaly and what he displayed and what could this do for him going forward? We talked about it earlier today in a staff meeting. Uh, Coach brought it up. He said every time we have called on Kareem, he has been ready to go. There's something about it. It's the little things. Again, go back to Coach Cable. The way he calls your name, how you run into the game, gives Coach confidence. When he calls Kareem's name, he runs as if they have just said, there's free Chick-fil-A upstairs. <laughs> Is there? <laughs> He, there is no free <laughs> no. play upstairs, no. Because uh, you would have been here by yourself. <laughs> I that would not be case. here right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's really excited to play, and it's something. Of, there's something about a guy 
when you know you're going to get 100% every time. And so he's ready for his moment. He hadn't played a lot. And all of a sudden, to not play in a couple of ACC games, and then we drop him off in Cameron and say, okay, you're ready to go, kid. It was great for him to say, to, for us to hear him say in his play, yeah, coach, I'm ready. He wasn't afraid. I mean, At all. Ver Vernon Carey, is a, he could make people afraid. No question. He, Kareem got on the plane when he was 14 years old with another 16-year-old kid, and they said, you're going to live in Maryland and go to high school. Basically figure it out. So he's, he's had the way he's had to go through life in order to get to this point, I'm pretty sure he's saying, I'm, I'm definitely up for this challenge. Um, you know, I haven't seen or talked to my mom in a little while, and when guys get a chance to go home, he hasn't been able to do that a lot of times over the years. And, so, and then his experience playing on the uh, Mali national yeah. team, when you're playing a gold medal against the USA team, he's, he's played against and with some of the best players, and he showed that he was ready for his moment. All right, we're going to talk to a guy that you know fairly well, one of the lead ACC analysts coming up. Plus, Audis Tony is going to join us. Lon Brown, guest hosting the Jeff Capel Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. And welcome back to the Jeff Capel Show. I'm Alon Brown, guest hosting, and we are joined right now by former Boston College standout. Is that fair standout? Is that good enough? Yes, he was definitely a standout. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty good. Uh, now lead analyst for the ACC Network, Malcolm Huckabee. We've seen him at a number of Panther games this year. Joining us here on the show, Malcolm, welcome. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. I, I, I've heard you know this guy pretty well to my left. <laughs> How you doing, Malcolm? You doing all right, man? Uh, what's going on? How you doing, brother? Doing good, man. Doing good. How far do you guys go back? So he is, you know, he is like a family. He and my brother played at uh, Howard together. And, um, you know, I got a lot of funny stories. <laughs> uh, as, as a young guy coming up, watching him and my brother play going up, making the trek to, uh, to Howard, and, you know, him being the best man at my brother's wedding. Um, he's family. He's like a brother to me. Uh, that, that, that is definitely family. To me. No question. It's incredible, too, Malky. You think about those, the connections that we have. You just never know where, the, where this round ball, where air will take you. And it's amazing that I get a chance to watch you on TV. And um, I'm here at, uh, at Pittsburgh coaching and we're doing the things that we love to do. And it's amazing to whoever thought that when you were up for homecoming my sophomore year in college and you're coming to visit your brother Martin that 20, 30 years later, we're still connected <laughs> and trying to, uh, and, but still talking about the same thing though, the, the game of basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, man. It, it really, uh, it's really, I, I can't say it any better. It's just amazing, um, you know, that, uh, we're, we're, we're still in this game doing something that we love. I get the sense that you guys are making sure not to spill any stories that are going to embarrass anyone. No stories from the well, early 90s, Malcolm. I, I hate <laughs> to have to cut you off now. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I talked to my brother prior, and, um, you know, sadly, there's very few that I could actually uh, tell, but uh, we, we, we joke about it all the time. Social media, we had to have. Some change if we wanted to make a phone call back in the no day. Everybody had pagers. <laughs> uh, so, so I, I think in a lot of ways that was a good thing, good timing. Um, you know that that we didn't have to deal with a lot of these uh, issues and 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 the the pressures of social media. Then. But you know, it's I, I think also too though I give a lot of these coaches uh, like Milan, uh, Coach Capel, a lot of credit. Uh, I, I know we're we're veering, but I think it's part of the game today, and I think. You know, whether we, uh, we, we we laugh and joke about it, but if it's not handled uh, in a proper way, I've seen that obviously derail careers um, yeah. and uh, ruin lives um, because, unfortunately, in this day and age, uh, one bad decision on social media could really uh, change, you know, your trajectory uh, in life, not just basketball, but change your trajectory in life. All right, Malcolm. Malcolm Huckabee is joining us from ESPN and the ACC Network. Stay with us. We're going to ask you a little bit about this Pitt team and the conference this year as we continue. Milan Brown guest hosting the Jeff Capel Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. McGowan pulls up and he hits it. X-Man jam. Woo! Gowans against the bigger trail with a lob to Shep Penny. To Ryan Murphy for the three. Yes. Wow. And the place is on fire.
Jeff Hathorn here with Panthers assistant coach Milan Brown, and we are joined by Malcolm Huckabee, ACC Network analyst, BC player. And before we ask him to evaluate your team, how would you evaluate Malcolm as a player? Yeah, Mark, I was telling the guys, you were obviously a really good player, and unfortunately for uh, some injuries, you would have had a chance to play in, uh, at the highest level for a long, a long, long time. A tough player, uh, knew how to play. Um, I know some of that came from his father and just the area he grew up in, Connecticut, just understanding how to play. Malcolm, I, I want to ask you, do you see some of that toughness, especially in the way they've played here over the last few weeks in this pit team? You've seen them a few times. What are your impressions? So I, I will say they are a team that, um, at times I really, really, um, you know, I like. And I think the key word, and I know this isn't always, um, you know, popular in, 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 in college sports and just in, in, in the society we are now, they want uh, results right away. Um, but the talent is there, and I think the toughness. When I think of your backcourt, um, it reminds me a little bit of the backcourt that uh, I played with back in the days, a guy by the name of Howard Isley another uh, guy by the name of Gerard Abrams, uh, two guys from Detroit. Um, the players. And, you know, they're very young, um, you know. So I, I, I know, again, you know, that might sound like, you know, coach speech, um, but I think of my career um, coming in at the time, Big East, and we had, you know, two freshman point guards. So uh, our second game, me and Howard Isley, we go down to Duke. Uh, second college game, oh. he had played on the number one team in the country, Southwest Detroit, um, you know, and they didn't lose a game. Uh, I played on the number 18 team in the country. We didn't lose a game. And, you know, now you go in there and you're playing against, you know, I'm guarding Grant Hill. Uh, so now it's time <laughs> to get into the weight room. Um, <laughs> guys, we, running around with Bobby Hurley, and they just come off winning the national championship. And I guess my point, my, my point being is when I evaluate Pitt, I think if you keep this unit together, um, and I look at what you have, um, if you keep this unit together by next year, even by the end of this year, um, I see them as a very, um, you know, a very good and, and definitely a tournament team. Um, because when you have the talent that Xavier Johnson has, when you have the talent that Trey has, um, their ability to pressure guards. Um, not only on the defensive end, but I think the way that they get into the paint and, and obviously in the open court, um, they are a very dangerous key team. I think the, 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 the problem and I think the frustration has been has been the uh, inconsistent play. Um, at times, you look at it, you come out, you have some great wins. You beat Florida State, uh, you know, now looking like a really great team, um, you know, top 25 team at Rutgers. You guys beat them. I think – um, you know, I really love your young players. Um, obviously, Aubrey Tony had a great, great game. Uh, but for me, Champagny is going to be another guy that's just going to continue to get better. Um, and you throw in Trey, you throw in X, um, a little bit more poise, a little bit more uh, experience, um, but in-game situations. And I think you guys have all the pieces in place um, to be a top-tier um, and consistent uh, ACC team. Malcolm Huckabee is joining us, ACC Network, and you've seen a lot of the teams. Currently, it's Louisville at the top. You could probably say Louisville, Florida State, Duke might be the cream, but how do you see this league this year? I, I think like college basketball, I think uh, on any given night, uh, you're going to see things. Uh, obviously, maybe not like what you saw with um, – you know, Duke losing um, uh, at home, I believe, with Stephen F. Austin. Um, but, you know, I, I think the league in general right now, um, and we, you know, I had a Syracuse game, at the Syracuse game speaking with Jim Beheim about this. I, I agree where he said, look, I think the middle to bottom half has gotten better. And then you look at what a Virginia lost, you look at, what Duke lost from last year, and I think there's less of a gap. So when I look at the team, I still say, um, you know, it's going to go through a Duke, and then you throw in a team like a Florida State and a Louisville, 
um, I, I think it's you. You can almost flip a flip a flip a coin with those uh, those teams right there because, uh, as it's already been proven, on any given night, um, you know, a Florida State can take a loss. Um, obviously, a, 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 a Louisville. Um, but and I've always said Trey Jones to me uh, may not be Duke's most talented player even last year, um, but he might be their most important. And I think when he's playing well. I don't think they're unbeatable, but I think uh, when he's playing well, um, they're very difficult to match up with because I think he does what your guards do, which is he pressures the ball well. And then when he doesn't have turnovers, which he did in the game against you guys, and he had eight assists, zero turnovers, um, you know, that offense, they just don't make many mistakes. Uh, and then middle half, you know, that middle half of the league, um, you know, look, again, I, I it, it's a guess. I mean, I, I, I like what you guys do, again, when you're playing well. You're not turning the ball over, and I'm not saying that because Milan's uh, uh, sitting right next to you. Um, I think you guys on, you know, I wouldn't want to, um, you know, have to bet against you when your guards are playing well. When Trey and X are playing well um, and, and making good decisions with the ball um, to go along with knocking down shots, they're just a handful to keep out of the paint. I think the, the question mark is, is which one of those guys is going to show up and, you know when they're when they're making good decisions, um, and they're in the lane, and you guys are getting to the free throw line, um, you're very difficult to match up against. Hey, you see him on ESPN and on the ACC Network, Malcolm Huckabee. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Appreciate him out. Thanks a lot, guys. See you guys this weekend. All right, he's awesome, coming. Brother. He's coming off a career performance. Audis Tony is going to join us as Milan Brown is co-hosting or guest hosting the Jeff Cable Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Assistant Coach Milan Brown, guest hosting here, the Jeff Capel Radio Show, Jeff Hathorn. And we're joined by a man who had quite a game at Duke. He's been coming on since returning from injury. We're joined by sophomore Adis Tony. Adis, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How would you describe your game Tuesday at Duke? Um, it was just electrifying. It was just energy, uh, aggressive uh, the whole time. Minimally locked in, so. Was that the key there, like not being afraid and just attacking, even knowing knowing what they have, but you can't sit back, you have to attack? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, like, like the coaches sat down with us, like before we got here and recruited us. Uh, they wanted guys to come in, to be able to come to this program and go to Duke and North Carolina and Chapel Hill, stuff like that, to just punch them in the mouth first, you know? So, like, that's what we all had a mindset of doing when we went into Duke. Is there a point, though, where you, you walk in and, like, maybe for the first shoot-around where you look in and you take a look around and then you kind of get that out of the way? Is that what's so good about having, like, two shoot-arounds, if you will? Yes, sir. When we first walked in, uh, the night we got there, it was it was shocking because that was my first time ever been in the camera indoors. So I was like, wow, you know. But then at the same time, when the game's, when the lights come on, it's the game time. So, Coach didn't walk you upstairs and say, hey, look, there's me. Nah, nah. <laughs> he's too locked in in the game. So, Adis, I know you're, you're kind of a guard forward. So, do you work with Milan? Do you work with Jason? Do you work with, I mean, with Tim? Like, how do you work your day? Uh, I work out with Coach uh, Coach Brown and Coach JC as well. Uh, it's just different things. They do different things. Like Coach Brown, there's a lot of shooting, a lot of ball handling. Uh, JC is the same thing as uh, ball handling, post moves, stuff like that. So. Just so different things. A little bit of everything. Add little things to add to the game. I imagine that's got to help you because you kind of understand where everybody's doing, right? Yes, sir. What are your impressions, Milano, of what Audis has done, especially since coming back from the elbow injury? Well, I think that's one of the biggest things is that he was able to gain his confidence back after being injured. You just don't know how long um, it's going to take a guy to get his, the feel of the game back. That's the hard thing. Most of the time when you're playing well, and I'm pretty sure Audis can attest to this, when you're playing well, you just have a good feel. You feel good on the court. You understand where the guys are going to be, where the play needs to be made. And so it just took him a little bit longer to get the feel back because he couldn't – he was out of commission. And so um, – and then still trying to find his role, even though he's one of the staples, obviously, of our program. Um, he – you know, it's unmistakable that Trey and X and Ardice have been pretty much the pillars of the program so far. And the guys have continued to that we continue to add in. They've had to 
in a weird way, still tried to bring along, even though it's only their second year. Right. And that's where they've tried to grab some experience from a guy like Terrell Brown, who's been here. And so he's just been tremendous for us. I don't know if it will happen. I don't know how the other coaches feel, but I do know this. I don't know what the ball will do for him as far as going to basket. But I know when we go on the other end, whoever he is guarding is going to have a rough night. And so we just saw uh, the kid at Louisville, Noir, just, I think he just broke his career high at Boston College the other day with like 37. When they walk across the street 10 years from now, he'll definitely wave at Odise because they'll know who he is. I mean, they, yeah. they will have an intimate relationship because <laughs> on the court they had an intimate relationship. And I think from a respect factor, sure. most of the time when you're good in anything, you just, you just want the guy's best shot. And then that gets to let you know how far along you actually really are and, and, and where you stand on the, on, the, on the rankings as far as how good you are as a player. I think of you in a way, Audis, is uh, like Julius Page, one of the greatest to play here. They remember him for, for maybe a few dunks, kind of like what, with what happened at Duke, and obviously so. But you, you almost look at him and you think, wow, he scored 1,000 points because everything I remember about him is defense. Do you relish that role? Like, do you want – are you the guy like, hey, I'll take their – Top guy? Yeah, that's just, that's just been my set. Like, you always want to play this, the best defenders. Like, they always say, okay, he, he's averaging 30. I'm going to see if he averaged 30 on me. So, like, I want to guard the best player. So, like, i always been like that, a bit competitive. So, I just lock in on whoever I want. And you're not asked for it either. Coach will just no. tell him. <laughs> <you want it. laughs> well, in your yeah. mind, what, what makes a good defender? What makes a good defender? Uh, I mean – person is like locked in mentally the whole game like sliding their feet knowing knowing the other players weaknesses and tendencies and stuff like that like the stuff they like to do and make them uncomfortable mental matchups with war i mean obviously there's some great players there are also some verbal things that go on during a game it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot of talking <laughs> trash talking be careful now yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I know there's a line like there's got to be some. There's probably a little intimidation, but you don't want to go too far, right? Yeah, that's true. I think the guys are being really com- – and part of that is just being the competitive nature they have. And even in a situation like the, you know, the war at Louisville or little Chris at Miami, I mean, those guys are really, really good players. Uh, you have to have a short memory as well because you're not going to shut those guys out. So I think one of the things that Ardiz does a great job of, and the other guy who hunts for us too is Trey – they do a good job of just making sure that they allow them to take the toughest shot possible in that moment. And if they make it in the game plan that we have set up for them, you shake his hand and say, that was a good shot. I will be back the next play to see if you can do it again. So it's like a corner in football. You get beat, you just get right back at it. You have to have that. You have to have that. And I think that's one of the good things that, that he brings to the table. Um, Sometimes as coaches, his memory not, might not be as short as we like it every so often. <laughs> it gets so ticked off sometimes that the kid may score. But I think that is one of the things that makes him very good. But, Coach, be real. Uh, you know, there's times where they forget about it, but you keep bringing it up to them. Yeah, we, if we need to, we will definitely <laughs> poke the bear in the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> More with Audis, Tony, Milan Brown, guest hosting here on the Jeff Capel Radio Show on the Pit Panthers Radio Network. It just has it all. Everyone is on their feet. Yeah, we just witnessed history. Hit beyond the script. Weekly on AT&T Sportsnet. And welcome back as we are joined by guest host Milan Brown, assistant coach for the Panthers, as well as Audis Tony and Audis. Uh, what? How did? 
Pitt get on your list, and, and how did it come down to your final decision being here in Pittsburgh? Actually, uh, I was in Indiana for the UAA session, too, and that's when I got picked up the offer from uh, Pitt. And, and even I was talking to Coach Brown because Coach Brown was at College of Charleston at the time, but then he made a transfer to Pitt, and I was in contact with him as well. And he was letting me know that he made it to Pitt and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, I kept in contact with him. And that's when they threw the offer. Uh, Jeff called that later on that night, threw an offer. And it just, they've been on my mind. They just text me every day, text my mom every day. And that was big because, like, most coaches don't, they involved with the players, but never involved in the, the parents. And that was big on me because I wanted my mom to be in, the, in recruitment as well. And they just stayed on it every day. Like, after school, they just called. And it was just... Love, it felt like a family. So I, was, I took a visit here and I committed. What's that like for, I was not that kind of athlete. Uh, Milan, you were a very good basketball player. What's that like when all these coaches, these people are showing you all this attention and you have to make a decision? I, I, that's, probably the, that's probably the biggest decision. Like, your, like your, your year is like, it's hard. It's real hard to do. And that's just like waking up in the morning, like what shoes you gonna wear with your outfit? But it's just hard. <laughs> It's hard to pick where in school you want to go to because you had to stick with that school for your rest of your life, you know. So it was just it was real difficult, like having all these coaches and stuff calling you, and it's overwhelming. Sometimes you don't get get time to sleep, and I just had to cut my list down early. So I was just picked apart you, pros and cons. You Trey and X didn't play that far from each other when you think of it from a nationwide standpoint. How did you know each other? How did those interactions go before you guys? ended up here? Uh, we was actually, all of us played on the EYBL, the Nike circuit, and we got invited to Victor Oladipo Camp, Skills Academy in DC, and we all was in, we was all, room, me and Trey was roommates, and X was, uh, was like two doors down, and we was all just on a, different teams and stuff, we was playing against each other, and we all was just talking at the table one day, we was just laughing and joking, and we was like, yeah, we're going to end up at the same school together. and. Two years after that, probably not even two years, a year after that, we all committed to the same school, and it was just crazy. Coach was saying earlier you're part of that group, part of that core. Do you relish that type of leadership role? Do you want to be that, that guy? Yes, sir. I, I always always preach to myself that I always got to lead, not follow, you know, and i always been like that. Like my mom raised me that way. Always lead, be a leader. So and that's what Coach did, buy into and being a leader. Each day in practice, each day on, on the game, anything in locker room, just be a leader. You've seen it now over the last few games. The Oakland Zoo is is back. You, you hear it. It's it's loud. It's, what's the environment like at home? And I know you guys have a big game at noon on Sunday. It's crazy. I, I love the Oakland Zoo. It, it gets us fired up. Like it, before the tip off, warm ups, they all into it. Like we into it. So that's what gets everybody pumped up and for the game. Well, good luck. Thank you. The rest sir. of the way, uh, I know a big rematch with Miami, and then two other games this week. A chance to get right back in that ACC hunt. Best of luck to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Alon Brown. Thank you. Guest hosting here today. Our thanks to Malcolm Huckabee for joining us from the ACC Network and ESPN. Panthers home noon here on the Pit Panthers Radio Network.